This is the LGS Podcast, chatting all things skateboarding with Jason Emery from Let's Go Skate. All right, everyone, welcome back to the LGS Podcast. This is episode three, and we have Jess here today. Um, yeah, Jess is one of my customers. Her daughter has had lessons with me and stuff. She found me on TikTok. We're going to get into all of that. We're going to learn about how Eliza got into skateboarding, like what it means to her, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's just a chance for any parent that is, um, you know, any parent that's got a child getting into skateboarding right now, like it can be not scary, but, you know, you don't know how it's going to be because you probably haven't done it yourself. So I'm hoping by chatting with Jess today, we can give a bit of backstory on how her daughter's got into it any issues or problems you may have and all the good stuff that comes with it and yeah we'll take it from there so hello Jess hello morning how you doing I'm I'm good right now I'm happy we're getting this done I always like to say when we're recording it is Tuesday 8th of March uh nice and early in the morning sun's out for me you got sun got sun sun in in sunny Lewisham yeah good bit of sun so yeah, we're going to get into it. I want to know a little bit about you, Jess, because I think before we get into Eliza, we want to know a bit about the history. So we're going to ask a bit about mum. OK, it's a bit of backstory for context. So, Jess, were you were you ever sporty growing up yourself? You ever been sporty? Yeah, I was quite sporty, actually. I really enjoyed especially team sports, you know, kind of just like mucking yep. in and being in it together. And yeah, I played a lot of the usual stuff like netball and hockey and that kind of thing. But um my parents actually they had a sounds dead fancy and I'm not fancy at all I'm from Scunthorpe but we had a, a, a speedboat with a speedboat and we shared it with another family and we wow. used to take it um yeah to um to a place called New Holland which is just by the uh the Humber the River Humber the Humber Bridge in uh, yeah. Humberside and uh we had a caravan on the this river that was really this lake sorry that was really 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 cold it was freezing water and uh it was just like a um a round lake with loads of caravans around it and everyone would pitch up on a friday night and stay in their yeah. caravan and there was like a, a clubhouse where everyone would have a drink at night and everyone would just ski or weekend and we had one of those you know those rubber dinghies that you yeah ringos that you put behind your boat and there'd be lots of fun with me and friends so you were doing water sports and stuff water sports yeah it's fun that's cool yeah Yeah. did you ever have any interest in skateboarding though I didn't at all I don't know how that passed me by like I definitely remember um, Back to the Future and having a crush on uh (laughs) what's his face yeah Yeah, yeah. (laughs) and watching him do that kind of ollie ollie up a curb um Mm. and that kind of stayed in my head but no, I didn't. I don't think, I think it's interesting, isn't it? You kind of um, get into what your family are into or your friends are into. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's absolutely so. fine. It's just, it, it's just, um, and then I'll I'll ask this a little bit as well. So a little bit, um, I might, you never know, I might get Eliza's dad on here one day, but just very briefly, John, which is Eliza's <laughs> dad, was, uh, is he, was he sporty growing up? Do you know much about him? Was he ever oh, interested in skateboarding? Oh, poor John. No, he wasn't sporty at all. No. He wouldn't mind me saying, and he would um, okay. yeah, tell you the story when he when he sees you. But he went to school and he got proper picked on for not being sporty. So, oh, um, he? yeah, he was the total opposite. He went to quite a sporty school. Uh, it was quite sport focused. And um, yeah, they kind <laughs> of, I think they gave him a, a nickname that kind of stuck that was kind of related to him not being sporty. So not at all. No, he's oh, not. Okay. Well, if I ever get him on here, I'm sure I'll delve into all of that. But um, that's <laughs> fine. So, um, and then um, obviously you've got two children as well. So you've got um, you've got an older son called Solly as well, haven't you? Um, has he ever been interested in sports or anything? On skateboard or anything? He's, he's one of those kids, Jason, that's really annoyingly kind of quite good at, at everything he tries. But his favourite oh. thing is um, is gaming. Yeah, so you know, aware, if you yeah. if you put him, yeah, if you put him on a football uh, pitch, you know, with some mates, he'll he'll be able to tackle and score goals. He never plays football. He had a couple of skateboarding lessons. He you know dropped in oh, on yeah. his second lesson, and he he had oh. balance. And I'm sure he would have been great, but he much Just prefers to hold the. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that's all you can do. Like, yeah, you, as a parent, you just like give the children the opportunities and you've got to let them go with what they kind of want to do, um, which yeah. is absolutely fine. So, yeah, so we've got a bit of the backstory on all of that, which I thought was, you know, worth delving into. Um, and then we'll get into Eliza. So obviously Eliza is your youngest child. How old is Eliza now? 
Uh, she's 11. She'll be 12 in July. Yeah, she just started yeah. secondary school, hasn't she? Yeah. Just started secondary. Cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so we'll delve into it. So like, what made Eliza want to skate? Do you know? Like, was there, you know, was did it come from herself? Or was it something that you two, you and John, you know, tried, tried out for her? Yeah, well, I'm gonna. She's gonna watch this back, isn't she? And she's gonna probably disagree with everything <laughs> I, I say, and I'm gonna be in loads of trouble. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I think is be, before I mentioned, um, like you get into what your friends and your family are into. But actually, because um, that's all we had when 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 I was young, we didn't have like social media or TikTok or anything. But I'd say that YouTube and TikTok um, was her way in. I think she mm. she watched other people skating and it inspired her and she thought it looked fun and she thought it looked cool and she was excited by it and uh, wanted to give it a go. Yeah, yeah so, so social reckon- media and, and TikTok, which we'll get into a lot on TikTok. Um, so what were the early conversations that you had about this? Like, how did you find out that Eliza was getting an interest in skateboarding? So you know that it's through TikTok, but like, how did that come to your attention? Was it because, I don't know, you walked in the bedroom and you noticed it? Or did she start talking to you about it? Like, how did that go, how did that go about? Yeah, well, we've got um, uh, a nephew who lives locally around the corner. He's about 10 years older than me. Uh, younger than me so 10 years older than Eliza and he <laughs> Get it right. yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't I probably even got all that maths wrong but anyway yeah he's mm. how old is he he's he's 20 years older than Eliza 10 years younger than me right. a kind of a, you know a <laughs> bit of an uh, he, she she looks up to him uh, a lot and he used to skate so um she got first of all it started with chats so she um would chat to him a lot about uh what what he you know tricks that he could do and where he would skate and um um you know what 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 kind of uh, how hard it was and whether she should give it a go and I think he might have given her a lot of confidence and encouraged her to to kind of start and then yeah she asked she asked for a board she asked for she a board, asked for a skateboard, um, yeah Good, yeah. like that's the next bit on my, I've got my little notes here <laughs> that I'm going through. If anyone sees me looking over to the left, so the next bit was to ask about the first skateboard. What did you get and how did you get it for her? So talk about that, the first skateboard. Oh, yeah. So luckily she's got um, a dad who's really good at researching. So, you know, if it had been down to me, we'd probably just have gone, I mean, cover, your, cover your ears, but we'd probably just have gone to like, I don't know, Smith's and picked up a skateboard yeah. off a rack. Uh, but mm-hmm. luckily John, uh, my husband, um researched and found out you know what boards could be good and and then kind of fell into this dark skateboarding hole <laughs> with bearings him, and wheels and all of this yeah, yeah good old john so thank goodness for him because yeah she ended up with a semi you know you don't want to spend a lot of money do you because you don't know if they're going to like it but something exactly. you know semi-decent um uh but for eliza it was a you know a, i think she quite liked the the kind of style that came with skateboarding so the deck that she chose I can't actually remember the first one but I know there's a lot of time choosing like the colors and the design um and okay she's always- so she was yeah so she got to choose then so you she allowed she was able to choose and um the aesthetic of it the graphic was important to her which is absolutely fine it's uh it's interesting to know yeah, I think it is. I think that really appealed to her and it does a lot of her, um, you know, not just to generalise, I know a lot more girl skaters than I do boys um, who are children and her girlfriends are similar that way. They enjoy the creativity of, of being, able, being able to choose, you know, what they, uh, you know, want on their boards because they feel like it represents them, if you like. And Eliza mm. loves the fashion. She loves the beanies and the, yeah. and the, and the, you know, all the different logos and designs. And she, she's totally into all of that. It really, yeah, it really yeah, appealed no, to her. That is good. Like, I'm like the opposite. I'm terrible. Like, I just don't even care for the fashion <laughs> and the graphic. I mean, like, I, I can see graphics and I appreciate it. I just, it, but that's what's so cool about skateboarding. Like, there is no set rules. Like, it doesn't matter that I'm not interested in that stuff. Like, and it's super cool that she is. Like, it's all good. Um, so, yeah, she got her first skateboard. You probably can't remember what it is or where. So maybe that'll be a question for John <laughs> time. Absolutely fine. Um, but, yeah, um, I'm going to ask you for early experiences of her riding a board. So she gets her skateboard, like, um you meant is it uh her cousin that you mentioned earlier you, so your nephew yeah he can, he can do a little bit can he yeah he can, he can do, do a little skateboarding. bit did, did she yeah, meet up with can... him am i or was that you know was that happening it, a bit yeah. 
Yes, she did. She, she met up with her uh, with him uh, down our local skate park. Shout out to Folkestone Gardens. <laughs> great, great skate park around the corner. And um, yeah, her dad took her more than me just because I think he's got a lot more patience when it comes to, you know, she she's she's you know really determined but you know there are some friends that she's got and they'll try a trick once or twice and they've got it whereas uh, with Eliza she'll have to try and try and try and try and she doesn't give up um yeah. unless she gets hurt yeah. or scared so yeah. <laughs> so it was You're it right. was um I had less patience at the beginning because you have to hold you know well she wanted us to hold her hands yeah. a lot and she would get really frustrated when she couldn't get it and it was too stressful for me <laughs> so I just you know bailed a lot and her dad would spend probably hours down there uh and but it was such a thrill you know they'd come home and she'd be like oh I went over a ramp or you know I you know whatever yeah, she, she'd just, done that it is really rewarding um so it was mainly John so it was mainly John you'd say that was taking her down to what skate did you say Folkestone Folk, Folkestone Gardens Folkestone. I don't even know if I know that one yeah I don't think yeah, I know well, it's, I don't it's, even know it yeah. I will have to take you Jason it's a lovely lovely uh, <laughs> yeah I, Just... I love going to different ones um so he was yeah. taking her down there so he so before because i'm going to get into i know she started to get lessons with school of skate and we're going to get into that in a minute yeah. but before that so it was john taking her out a bit and he i guess she managed to do like well how far did she get i guess without before lessons came into play like do you know i mean you might not remember everything um, but like john did I... it about quite a bit we took in weeks months like you know how long before you decided to I'd get um, someone we, to help but her. It was a lot of hours. <laughs> That's great. It no, was, I love that. Yeah. It was weeks, but yeah, it was every day and it was, um, you know, a good few hours because, uh, I mean, it was lockdown, which we could move yes. to. I mean, like, skating saved us in lockdown. We were, mm-hmm. were so, so lucky that it kind of all, um, you know, fell into place uh, for her. A couple, you know, she got her board a couple of months before the first lockdown for that Christmas. And right. It was so just let's, really- let's touch on that quickly. So with the lockdowns, like was Eliza doing any other sports or anything before skateboarding? Like I know she does a bit of football, but I think that's for the school, isn't it? But is she in any yeah. other clubs or sport herself in any other things? No, I mean she's just always joined in all the normal what normal um yeah. sports you'd expect with a school like just hockey average. and basketball. Yeah, and, yeah football. Right, but, yeah, but and, and has she ever had any like e- okay? So no sports she's been really into because obviously yeah she's really into skateboarding now and you know we'll get into all that. But so was she really into anything else before skateboarding? Would you say? Yeah, she did like a drama class. She, yeah. yeah, they go through okay. they go through stages, don't they? I'm trying to remember, of course. there was like yeah. a, a slime stage that wasn't a club, but she was massively into slime, <laughs> and then and there was like Wait. a gymnastics. <laughs> Stage. so she went to gymnastics classes all the time then uh drama so yeah on saturday she'd do like singing and dancing and acting yeah yeah so she was doing some other things but then obviously lockdown came so i'm guessing a lot of that kind of stopped didn't it exactly we all moved to zoom and it wasn't quite the same so she kind of lost interest yeah of course yeah so then you know then we get into our skateboarding uh, which is wicked so yeah let's uh get into school of skate so school of skate do skateboard lessons uh i don't quite know where somewhere in london i'm assuming um so yeah. i'm sure you can touch on them and we can shout them out so um the question was how long has eliza been skateboarding before her first lesson uh, i think we've kind of got into that so ha- so it had been weeks did you say until she had her first yeah, lesson I reckon a couple, yeah yeah because I think, if I remember rightly, she got um, uh, we bought her a lesson with um, School of Skate with the skateboard as a Christmas present because they are really local. Oh. They're just kind of around the corner. They're south southeast London. Uh, well, they cover a lot of London, but they're okay. Yeah. So, so they yeah, so the Christmas present was the skateboard and the lesson, and then yeah. and then you had a few weeks of figuring it out with John at the skate park, and then the lesson came. Is that correct? Yeah, so she had a lesson uh, with Stu, who is the, the guy that runs School Skate. And uh, mm-hmm. what, what's lovely, actually, about, um, uh, I guess it happens with most skate schools, is that they are they become quite community orientated. So Folkestone Gardens, um, our local skate park, um, you know, everybody kind of knows everybody. So, yeah, nice. he, Stu, you can see him there. He's kind of just always there as, you know, People always yeah. recognise you, don't they, when you're when you're teaching? They do. They can, you get yeah. it, yeah. So I need to go back a little bit more now, just so I get context. So it was so when John did his research for that first skateboard, he also found School of Skate. I'm assuming, 
and knew that was a good idea. Yeah. So he, so so, yeah, he knew like off the bat that he was going to get her a lesson because obviously this is, I mean, skate schools is kind of a new thing. Whereas like when I started skateboarding, like that was not an opportunity. So it's super. So for me, it's just really interesting to find out now that a parent saw their daughter getting into skateboarding and he was able to get her a skateboard and go and get her a skateboard lesson. Yeah. It is pretty impressive, isn't it? And um, and it's lovely that you can have like these these options of doing group ones and one to one because both of them, um, I'd say, um, have have different benefits. Like one to one, obviously, because you get the teacher all to yourself and they can, you know, pay much more attention to, to you and your yeah. and what you need and your, you know, how to develop your skills. But the group ones equally as um, important because that's where you meet your friends. Um, yes, and, that's, you know, and School of Skate it. were offering both of those kind of services, were they? Yeah, it's hard to remember, isn't it? It's a bit of a blur. Yeah. I think group <laughs> lessons weren't possible in lockdown. Oh, we I had all that, that was, stuff I going think on. That was yeah. an issue. Yeah, for me, um, it was April, April twenty twenty one. They opened that up because I couldn't do groups. I remember I wasn't doing. I think I did some groups in the summer twenty twenty, and then I couldn't. Oh, I don't yeah, know. but yeah, I see what you're saying. So, um, but yeah, she had. Um, different types of lessons and stuff and that um I mean I don't think she has lessons there anymore does she or is she still getting lessons yeah they get they um they get uh well, as they get older they um and they meet their friends they s- seem like I don't know if you find this with your students Jason like they lessons become less of a thing that they learn 100%. kind of together in their yeah in their groups well, but... yeah which that's why I created road trips and we'll get into that but yeah like I genuinely believe like I'll, I'll mention this in the podcast now, like when it comes to lessons, like I don't think that we're driving instructors. No, I think we kind of are driving instructors in the sense that once you pass your driving test, you don't have driving lessons anymore, right? So I just feel yeah. like when we're teaching children skateboarding, like if you can get them to that certain level, then the need to have us all the time isn't there as much. So, you know, yeah. I've got the road trips and stuff, which is ways to still be with them and, you know, and help them. But uh, you're right, like the traditional lessons don't need to happen as much once they get to a certain level. Um, so yeah, so she she got to that point where you stopped having a lesson so much um and i'll just put here make sure she shouts them out so yeah we're, we're shouting out school <laughs> we've, skate definitely done that. That was, we've, definitely- we've done that haven't we so that was good for school to skate early on um helping uh, eliza out with a skateboarding wasn't it which is wicked um uh yeah if they wanted if anyone wants to find out about school to skate um they've got a website and all that stuff haven't they you used to book on the website didn't you yeah yeah they've got a website so just yeah you just you just type in school of skate and it'll pop up we'll plug yeah. them and they do like weekend they're still running quite a bit yeah weekend stuff and all that i guess yeah they do they cover a lot of skate parks in london uh but mainly the majority is where <clears throat> they started off i think um the set the yeah southeast london but i think they cover um i saw recently on it was like they had some lessons in brighton even but yeah definitely south everyone's expanding yeah that's cool yeah. so yeah if you're around that area you can shout out school of skate so Moving on, like, I'm going to get into the whole TikTok stuff because that's a big part of Eliza's story with meeting me and everything. And we've, we've touched on it briefly, but um, I want to ask this one first because you know how amazing what I managed to do on TikTok and how it benefited Eliza. We'll get into that. But before I get to that, I still have a lot of parents that have issues with their children being on TikTok. So I'm just going to ask you, so like, as a parent, how were you with allowing Eliza to be on TikTok? Did you ever hear any bad news or did you have reservations or were you just okay letting her get a TikTok account and go on there and see stuff, you know? Uh, oh, so you're talking about parents letting their children use it? Yeah, because... Not um, fe- featuring on it? Uh, I'd say a bit of both. I'm just, and yeah, both. Because, well, because if I think one of the fears that parents have, I guess, is if they, they let their child have the TikTok app, they're going to start creating content and then obviously there's problems about that but um i'm just wondering just i mean i'm parent to a parent right here like your views on like how you know because I've, I've i've for reference my stepson's the same age as eliza so i had to go through these kind yeah. of questions um yeah. you know did you ever was it were you okay letting eliza go on to tiktok you know what i i was there you know i just always think of these things as long as everything in moderation like you know mm-hmm. don't get me wrong there are days like last week uh oh we were supposed to do our podcast last week and last week i had to take my uh thorn who got her into skateboarding his his wife just to to, to, to the hospital for a, for a checkup yeah. and we were so long so long waiting for the appointment when eliza was on her own at home because um well just yeah you know, she's you know, she's yeah, her brother. Her, yeah, uh, of course, came yeah. back she was on tiktok i think it, it, it 
I don't I think they just kicked her off at the end. I think they might have a maximum for about four and a half hours. Yeah. Um, did you do the screen time stuff then? Do you have that yeah, so you can see? I think, yeah. Yeah. We do yeah, screen time. Cause... So days like that happen and that's going to happen, you know, that you yeah, can't help it. Yeah kept a company but I'd say most days and that's unusual of course these things uh, don't happen very often most times I think you're able to kind of you know assess what's right and what's wrong and how much they've been on it now when she comes in from school um it's it's really nice to be for her to kind of you know let let, let things go and and relax a little bit and she'll have a drink and a snack and she'll go on TikTok and then after half an hour it's like okay let's go down the skate park or let's you know yeah so Thank obviously you. you've obviously the, the, um, what you're alluding to there is the dilemma of like should a child be on technology or should they be doing other things which and you make valid points and I, I agree with what you're saying there I guess well where, where I'm trying to really go with this is um you know are there any dangers on TikTok that you've been worried about like because there are parents that won't I, I know parents will let their children go on TikTok no I, let's, <laughs> I'm not cutting anything so this is all live we're doing it like this I've messed up um there are parents that um let their children use technology a lot but specifically won't use TikTok because of bad press um yeah so I guess well, that so that was that's where I'm going with it did you have any worries or concerns about letting her on that app specifically no I just yeah I think we're we're quite we're quite good at talking about the content and, and kind of peeking over her shoulder and you know yeah, she's brilliant. she's quite sensible as well I don't know I trust it I think they're going to get hold of it somehow like they're going to see yes. this stuff you might as well you know teach um, them how to use their time well and you know like I said there will be yeah. days where they're just you, you know your, your mums or dads are, are really really busy at work and their kids have to go on TikTok for longer than you've really yeah. ever hoped that they would or you know that like they okay. that I gave sweet but that's okay it happens yeah. but no yeah, I'm not worried about see, of her. course her being brainwashed or corrupted. Right, or... <laughs> brilliant. Because obviously that's a huge negative that everyone, you know, that I hear a lot of. And I think it is changing. I think perception is changing, but I'm going back like a couple of years ago because obviously I, I re- I'll mention this now. So for me, when lockdown hit, I can obviously teach skateboard lessons. And I started to spend a lot of time trying to research like how, how could I get, you know, my brand out there more. And TikTok was a marketplace, which, I mean, it still is growing if anyone's not on TikTok. But um, I kind of realised that I could create content for TikTok um, and children would like it. So like, that's what I started doing when lockdown hit. Um, and I know I knew TikTok was going to be, because everyone had this perception of TikTok was just little kids doing dances, right? And then once I realized <laughs> that like, there's more to it than that. And I spent like hours once just consuming TikTok content. Like that's when I realized like there's something here as well. So I started creating skateboarding content. I think I could still do private. Was I still doing private lessons? I think I can't remember all the rules. I do. I do skits and stuff anyway. So I'm guessing like Eliza found me on there, didn't she? Like she found what I was doing on TikTok, and I will shout myself out a little bit. Like I was, I've and been so a good positive should. role model. Yeah, and I know you. You know, I've got to be a little bit humble, but like you, uh, modest. Sorry, but uh, yeah, you're. I know you're very, uh, very good towards me. Yeah, very kind on me towards that. Uh, messing up my hair. Um, anyway, but yeah. So, um, where was I going with this? I was creating the content. And Eliza started finding my skateboard content, didn't she? So yeah. my question would my question to you now is like, how did you first find out about me? Like, did Eliza show you me? Like, how did that come about? Like, how did you learn about what I was doing on TikTok? It's funny, isn't it? Because TikTok kind of is in the background while you're cooking or you know, working, emailing, yep. whatever you're doing as a parent. Um, it was your voice, Jason. <laughs> your voice, I was like, right, this voice is now becoming part of our family. Like I've heard it <laughs> a lot of times, it's in the background. Um, and you know, and sometimes, you know, if something sounds weird, or not not that you did, but if something sounds weird and you think that's not quite right, I want to check what she's watching, you'll sit next to her. I sat next to her because I heard your voice so many times. I thought, I want to put a face to this voice. Was it the live? So, yeah, it was the live, wasn't it? Was it my live that I was doing? I think was it the she was live chats? Your, I think, yeah, I think, bef- yeah, she, she watched your videos and then she saw that you did lives. And that, I mean, yeah. that's amazing, that, you know, those lives, especially in lockdown. It was kind of a real... Uh, like it was it was a going out moment in lockdown where you could actually you felt like you had you know a, a reason Some to routine. kind of meet friends and, yeah. and that was yeah because yeah. obviously Joe Wicks did his PE thing which did amazing things for the country didn't with children and PE and I guess like I started to obviously build a uh, you know like a following on TikTok so then like I did start to do the live chats and I had to get safeguarding advice I went to speak to a lot of people because I was a bit worried like so I had a few 
obviously I don't do messages with children, but like I decided that doing a live chat at seven o'clock every day uh, was okay because you know these kids could ask someone like me that knows a lot about skateboarding like any questions and stuff and um yeah so you started <laughs> you started hearing me a lot coming up probably started over dinner hearing you a stuff. lot yeah <laughs> um yeah and I just think yeah you, you you were and you are um I'm gonna make you blush but you are so inspiring to them you've got such a way of kind of br- bringing them into your videos you know you're really lively um and it's interesting what you're doing and you know the children that are there um Eliza I remember that first road trip one she watched with them um, Kitty and the boys and then I think Romy joined your second road trip but she almost felt like she knew them before she'd even um because probably talk about this later just how how yeah. how those videos actually created such strong friendships some of those strongest mm-hmm. friendships began because she watched you on TikTok, then joins your lives, then join your road trip. <laughs> and, you know, it's yeah. really annoying for me because now, you know, her best friends live two hours away in the car. I have to schlep everyone. <laughs> <laughs> for sure and i am super proud of that like and we'll get into that a little what i that's actually my next point the friendships that developed and the lgs chat that was created so we'll mention that so i was doing my daily lives and for reference i've stopped doing them now purely because lockdowns ended and children were out doing all these clubs and stuff so there wasn't i mean it, as much as they all like jason you don't do your lives anymore it was getting to the point where i'd only have like four of them there and it's like i couldn't and like for me to do it every day it was quite a, i did it on christmas day i've done like you know and i loved it and i'm so glad that i did it but that is had its part in history so they're kind of done now but i'll do the odd ones but yeah so i was doing them every day so every day these kids knew that at seven o'clock they could come and listen to me and there'll be other like-minded children in that chat also there so friendships were made and and um and we'll talk i know romy's a big one we'll mention that in a bit but uh yeah there's this lgs chat do you need do you <laughs> do you know if they still have that going they created an oh, LGS they do, chat. and there's different variations of it. I think there's about yeah. three or four of them. Yeah, so there's one, so there's um, the original group, and they're quite like, we are the original gang. We... Really? <laughs> one... Oh, wow. Obviously, for, for, for safeguarding, <laughs> I decided not to be involved in it. Like, I had to make a dilemma in my head. Like, did I want to keep, did I want to be in these chats to keep an eye on it? But then at the same time, I didn't want, I don't do DMs with children, so I had to be a little careful. But I was aware that an LGS chat got created with um, the children that were regularly in the lies, which I thought was pretty cool. And isn't that I mean, it amazing that all came, yes. yeah, because of what you did. I think it's incredible, yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and all I those am super proud of that. Yeah. yeah, so like, um, I will share how I hope, no, I'll get to that in a bit. Yeah, so like, these children created friendships thanks to something I created, and I am proud of that, that's that great. So like, but it is it's still ongoing, like, and we're going back probably... 2020 in it like summer 2020 yeah. probably when it really kicked off so we're now a year and a half later um and obviously it's evolved so much to the point where quite a lot of these children are now meeting the children and like some of them i don't think eliza's met all of them yet has eliza met ida for example she has I don't know if she's met ida she has exactly so ida's up north you know what i mean like these, and um you know some of them like i haven't met all of them yet but like the, the ones that went in that chat and they were joining every day like I do hope to get to meet all of them at some point but some of them like way down south like um Alana and Grace I want to meet them at some point but um yeah it's really cool that we've all been meeting up and to the point now yeah you know, I'll, I'll mention this bit now like you literally have Romy over for sleepovers and everything don't you oh yeah we're big Romy fans and what's lovely as well is that you know through through you introducing the children as parents of some lovely you know, friendships as well. You're part of the, because it, the, I, I know you're not going to approve of this, but, you know, I love to watch Eliza skate, but actually five hours in the winter staring at, you know, your daughter's skateboarding. Freezing and it's really <laughs> boring that. after the fifth hour. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, of course. So, to have Romy's mum there, to have Sam there to, you know, chat to and have a cup of tea with. And actually, you know, I, I genuinely look forward to seeing her. She was at the um, Bay 66 girls night on Friday and we couldn't go. Eliza was sleeping at her grandma's and she sent me a, <laughs> she sent me a picture of a bag of chips that she was eating from the local chippy that we always go to saying, miss you. It's so sweet. Uh, so, yeah. So we, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we've, we, I've made some lovely friendships myself as well. Yeah, I like this. I, um, let's keep going with this. It's not one of my bullet points, but it's actually a really good thing. So, like, as so, you've now made friendships with other parents that have children on skateboard, um, and yeah. I guess like you can relate to them because, like, 
skateboarding is growing, but there's still it's still in its infancy, in my opinion. Like what we're going to see in the next hundred years, well, we won't be in our lifetime. But well, yeah, hopefully in our lifetime, <laughs> skateboarding is going to be a massive. I, I, you know, but it's still early. So for you to be able to find another parent, and obviously when met, you mentioned Sam, which is Romy's mum, like she also has a son. I think it's Max, isn't it? So like you can That's really it. relate because it's you've got the same um, children, similar ages, boy yeah, girl. Yeah. Um. So you've yeah you've helped create a friendship out of that, which which is super cool. Um, and because you can relate to each other about it all. And then um, yeah, the, the, let's talk about the Bay sixty six stuff because I've been seeing that. So they they're doing is it what the first Friday of every month is a girl? Yeah, so it's just um, yeah. So I mean, it used to be. I remember the days when Bedford used to feel really far, and now it feels really near because you journeys shrink, don't they? When you you do them a lot, and so you do um, a lot of driving. So- so you do, you do and John do a lot of driving. Like, shout out to you both, because fair play to that. But, um, yeah, sorry, carry on. <laughs> yeah, but the train's also really quick. So, um, you know, I've, I've taken Eliza to Romy's on the train before. It takes an hour and a half. super easy. Um, so Sam does that. She hops on the train uh, with um, with Romy. She brought Erin the Friday just gone. Um, yes. And, yeah, they just hop over to Bay 66. We go straight from school and, um, you know, me and Sam eat chips. We sometimes share a bottle of wine. <laughs> Um, and and uh, and the girls and the girls skate and it's just a way of keeping them you know in 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 contact i mean they see each other yeah. other times as well through your road trips and they're in you know on touch online yeah, yeah. and stuff but that girls' night is a really, really lovely Which, night. It's just yes, yeah. I want to talk about that because I'm really, I've not been obviously, but it does seem really cool. So it is for people that are listening. Like it is once a month on the first Friday at first Bay sixty six. Friday of every month, Bay sixty six, which is in West London under the Westway. Um, Good and, and it's, Bay sixty six has a lot of history. Bay 66 has a lot of history. I haven't been in so long, but I used to do competitions there. I used to get a train. And I did a Tony Hawk competition thing when I was like 16 or whatever. Like I used to go to Bay 66 quite a bit and it's changed so much. So I do need to get over there again, but it is a very yes. well-known indoor. Sk- well, it's not technically indoor, is it? It's obviously outdoor, but it's got the roots. So it is. it feels indoor. Um, yeah, but and- it's great because it, it, you never get stopped if it rains. So Yeah, and so... And all it's all inclusive, no, all exclusive, inclusive. I don't know, like all girl night. Like, yeah, how beneficial is that? Like, is because, um, topics of like, um, women coming to skateboarding, I don't want to delve into it too much in this one, but like, is it really nice for them to just have knowing that it's all girls? Like, does that mean something to them? Would you say? I'd say, I don't know if it means a, a more, you know, less of it's, it's an interesting one the skater community as far as i can see with all the skate parks that i've been to and i think i've been to quite a lot um i think skaters generally are just lovely lovely warm welcoming chatty open um people uh, regardless of whether they're girls or boys so you know i don't think it's really a sen- you know it doesn't it's not like oh it's all girls and it's very different because skate parks are always you know pr- pretty nice places anyway and quite inclusive but with the girls, I don't know what what is it. It just feels a bit. It feels a bit different. It feels a bit special, I guess, because it is all girls. Yes, um, I reckon the special thing. And like, if if there was someone that was kind of a beginner, uh, would it still be recommended that they come there? Like, because oh, hundred um, percent. Yeah, if they're feeling intimidated of going to a skate park, because like. I get that. Like, if 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 a uh, you know if a woman or a girl turns up at a skate park and you see me and others ripping, like it's gonna feel intimidating. But would you like that kind of where on that Friday night at the Bay sixty six? That's probably gonna be a really ideal place for them to go and meet like minded people and feel not so intimidated, right? That's it. That's it. And you know, and I've looked at certain groups of girls, probably 13, 14 year old girls, in their groups of six, looking extremely nervous holding each other's hands and going really slowly. You can tell it's their first, second, third time on a skateboard. They're Mm -hmm. all encouraging each other. And I'm pretty jealous. I'm like, oh my God, imagine if you had that at age 13, 14. You know, a a safe place to go that's full of positive vibes where you can just hang out with your friends um, and learn a new skill. Um, So there's lots of that going on. You know, there's some amazing, beautiful skaters there, you know, flying everywhere. Um, You know, there's um, Eliza and Romy pulling their faces, doing their (laughs) their stuff. And then there's some really, (laughs) and then there's some really sweet groups of girls just there to help and encourage each other and try something new. So yeah, anyone who's thinking about going um, shouldn't be put off by intimidation. It's definitely. Sure. 
Um, yeah. And then just quick, I'm going to mention it before I forget. I think it's a nice little thing. So one of my little, uh, one of my skaters, Freddie, uh, you might have seen, he, he's only eight. Uh, he, he watched he watched the road trip video to Pioneer recently because I took, I did the girl one with Eliza and Romy and that. And then I did a boy one. So his mum, Amy, got him to watch the video. Yeah. So he saw all this with the girls and all that. And then I'm there <laughs> with him on Sunday and he's doing it to the video. So he's obviously picked it up from him. I thought it was super <laughs> cute. Bless him. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I remember Freddie, he, he was at your Halloween trip, he, trip. Oh, he was. Oh, so you did meet yeah. him, yeah. And shout yeah. out Amy, she's a wicked mum as well. But um, yes, I just thought that was a cute little thing to put in there. Quick. That is um, cute. I just noticed that he started cute. doing it. Oh, it's funny um, when they get used cool. to it too. Do you, yeah, can, can I, I will ask you a question? In. Yeah, you can ask um, me anything if you want, sure. Yeah, do you notice a difference um, between the girl road trips and the boys? Or do you feel like they're... The, is there a different the vibe? The only reason I started to do it like that is because they get their little clicks, don't they? And it was, and and I want to make sure I can only take X amount of people, can I? So like, I, so just to reference what people, what I've just done is we did. Well, I had five girls, the one that John brang Eliza to, yeah, and then I just had six boys uh, last weekend gone. So if I put eleven of them together, like that's going to be too much for me to charge the same amount of money and still feel like I'm giving value to them all. So it it, it just came out of um, wanting to stick to friendship groups. Um, yeah. Obviously, like Romy and Eliza are lovely, and they are friendly in that. But like, they will, they won't realise that they're very in their own little group. And for another girl that might not be in that clique, it can feel a little bit intimidating. Uh, and they don't do that purposely. I've just, um, I've just got to try and encourage. And I do sometimes. I might try and welcome more girls in. You know, and yeah. just, that's just humans learning how to adapt and like realising that they, you know, they're so happy in their little clique doing their own little thing that there might be someone on the side that's feeling a bit like oh, I'm not in part of it. And then like they don't realise, <laughs> do they? So um, yeah. I'm trying to think what was the original question it was just like yeah no see... you answered it you i think yeah. yeah if you had if you if you if you could it wouldn't matter would it if you mix them it's not you're, you're not separating no. them because you feel like it's a different Correct. vibe it's just numbers and it, no. it makes sense it's just um, more interest now and I can only bring so many pick man of people and obviously I'm doing the skate parlor thing which I know you can't come to but that's mixed I've got there and I will try and do more road trips and I will mix it is it is they can be mixed it's just um mainly friendship groups um yeah. and if the boys the boys don't really know the girls as much whereas yeah that's just it. yeah but um right uh well the next thing is uh meeting me and road trips so we might as well start getting into all of that so like first time I met Eliza was that oxy one and that was the first time that I let someone come on a road trip that I hadn't met before so that was my first time meeting her wasn't it that was the oxy road trip that we did because um that feels weird that feels like yeah that feels like that was the first time time. but it It was was, yeah yeah I don't remember it was like kind of surreal for her when I got all the video like when I met her like went right up to her the video and all that um I'm trying to think, yeah, because obviously I guess I provided so much value and she was so, like, she probably viewed me as a celebrity or whatever, I don't know, um, because of the TikTok. Yeah, so, like, she totally you wanted did. To get her she involved, was so nervous. You? Yeah, she was really nervous to, because um, she had met some of your um, other students um, beforehand at different skate parks. I think you were the last she met, because I think we'd range between oh. me and other parents to meet up. So I think she'd met Romy before. I think Maybe. you might have done, actually. I think yeah. you might have met Romy. I think, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to remember. We're going back. This yeah. is last summer, wasn't it? But um, yeah, yeah. So she was totally yeah, like she was. Oh my gosh, she couldn't sleep the night before. She was so excited, and I know that lots of kids are like that as well. And I was a little bit. I was a bit like, yeah, because you're you're so used to seeing this person on a screen, and it's weird. Yeah. Like, the, the effect is strange, isn't it? That you're like I, a bit like, oh gosh, that person's we- actually real. Yeah, well, it is like seeing a celebrity. Yeah, if you, if you consume someone a lot, even though I'm not a celebrity, then you're going to get that feeling, aren't you? Um, no, I got it. I, I'll share it quick. I got it when I met Ryan Sheckler at um, Bay 66. So he's one of my favorite skateboarders, and I idolized him. And I remember, like at Bay 66, when the Eddie's team turned up and he dropped in and he did a blunt over the spine, and everybody ran over there. And it was just like, from that was my like, I'm looking at him like, oh my god, that's Ryan Sheckler. Like, oh, that's my Justin Bieber girl moment. Like, that's the only thing I've ever had. Like, I can relate to it then. It felt, I felt like I knew him. Like, it was just, and he didn't even know who I was. But yeah, <laughs> just fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm just exactly, gonna drop little exactly stories like that. In there, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, but- so yeah, she she got to meet me though. <laughs> um, did the road trip, like um, that was good, like it was a good day, weren't it? Even though it snowed. It's freezing, it was <laughs> it snowed so in April. Cool. Yeah, I'll try and do them indoor a bit more now. Um, and then yeah, she got to be part of the video. She she did the big drop in, didn't she? Has she done any other drop ins that big since then, Eliza? Do you remember? I don't, she, I don't know if she has, but again, ramp. that's the power of a road trip. 
if you're running around um... filming <laughs> and yeah other it... girls are, are doing it then you're like oh my god my time's running out this is not going to make the youtube video if i don't quickly do it so yeah um, it's the power of that i think we need to it's... yeah yeah, no, I, I have to find a balance because, like, it's we, we touch on it. Like, I I know that I can get a lot out of children if you, you know, positive vibes and all that stuff. And it's that group atmosphere, which I know existed because I got it as a teenager myself with my crew when I was learning to skate. Like, I knew that I would try things more if we've got that atmosphere going. So all I'm doing is trying to, I'm not, not forced, but I'm I'm finding a way to facilitate that for these girls and the boys, like, like you know, so... And yeah, like that drop in, like Rom Romy's the, the crazy one that will normally do something first. <laughs> so we've got to shout out Romy to that. But like Eliza backed her up, like, and she did it one time, just once. She wouldn't do it again, but she did do it. And they probably, they, they will ask me, is it fair? Is it fair? Like that quarter pipe is quite steep at the top, right? It's at least an eight foot round. I can't remember. It's a big round. I'm so glad I did. wasn't there. I'm so glad I wasn't there. It's, you know, like it's so rare that they mess up a drop in. Like they could probably do a vert round, but it's just, you know, it, it will get them to that point. Um, it's yeah. just, uh, it's the fear that stops most children. And I guess as my, as I get more experience, I learn where I can push and where I can't, you know, like you find in that right balance. So, um, but yeah, like since that road trip, she went on, she's been on every single one since apart from that lad one. You, you've yeah. like, oh, I think, she, 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 I think she's yeah. done more road trips now than anyone else. And you don't even live oh, near really? me. So I think that's, I oh, think well, so. she'll like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so like yeah so mainly you do the road trips with me but you have had a few private lessons and stuff and I think this is really funny when you told me this so I've put a note here come into Alconbury World and treating it like the Eiffel Tower Can you, <laughs> like just <laughs> just touch on that a little bit I find that so amusing yeah as we approached it was just like you know recognizing the landmarks within that skate park <laughs> and seeing that they were actually real was just too much yeah she's never been more excited about seeing a slide <laughs> and obviously Al just for Alcabry world is like it was a hundred thousand pound small little skate park but i guess she saw it so much from the videos that when she finally got to come it was like a big deal to her wasn't it <laughs> that's it and you know um, we had the inset day a couple of you know a, a, a yep. training day a couple of weeks ago and I said she could do whatever she wanted because she's been pretty good lately. She's helped <laughs> oh, me a lot. Yeah. And she chose blooming Brampton. I had to drive I, all the way to I Brampton can't. and back. Yeah. I know. That's, that um, so that's insane. All your fault, Jason Emery. It's all your <laughs> fault. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Brampton's a nice part, but it wouldn't really be worth driving that far. But um, <laughs> yeah, like... <sighs> I was literally, I've already said it once, so I'm going to say it again, like literally how great Jess, John are driving her over the country for road trips and experiences, because yeah. that is huge. Like, I know you probably know, but like, you deserve so much credit for that because I'm going to mention it now. Like, I get it quite a bit where parents stick to their same old, so they might take their child out to the same skate park all the time. Um, and I think I've learned from my own experiences because I used to stay at St. Nits a lot, because that was my local, you get so used to certain ramps and the, the radiuses and certain things that when you do go to another skate park, you struggle. And I'm pretty sure the best, one of the key ways to get better at skateboarding is to go to different skate parks and experience different things. And I'll share one reason why. A child, for whatever reason, may build up a fear of dropping in a five-foot ramp at their local. Um, and then they've got that phobia there, right? It's developed because they couldn't do it once, so they don't believe themselves. But then if you yeah, take them yeah. to another skate park on a different day, the sun's shining, they're with their friends, that vibe, they drop in a six-foot ramp because, you know, all the elements of their aligning. Then you go back to your local, and it's like, oh, that five-foot's easy now. I can drop it in, right? So, um, yeah, where well, I'm going with this, I'm just leaving a bit of tidbit of information for any parent that might be listening. It's getting their children into skateboarding. Like, please do drive and go to some of the other ones. Uh, make a yeah. day of it as well. Like before you know it, you'll be booking holidays, um, planning the skate parks around the holidays. Like, have you done that yet? I'm trying to think. Have you uh, gone anywhere? The skateboard, it's a pain in the neck to pack, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it has to come yeah. on every holiday with us and all the, you know, the helmet and the pads, of course. And um, yeah, but I mean, we don't mind driving around, but it's so, it's so different for different families. Some families have got, you know, the time and others um, haven't. Um, we do have some time so that, that is fortunate for us, but those car journeys aren't long, really, um, because I find them really wow. valuable. It's the only time. <laughs> it's, which it's the only time. Yeah. That, yeah. It's the only time she'll talk to me and Solly too. Oh, I mean, yes, okay. car, yeah. car time is precious. So you know, that day we drove to Brampton, 
uh, we got homework done. You know, I found out about which teachers she she wasn't, you know, getting on with too well at the moment or the ones that were really inspiring her. You know, I find, yeah. found out about what, you know, she was eating for lunch. I <laughs> found out, you know. I love that. No, that's amazing, for sure. That's ames yeah, like, really yeah, so if if because then you hit you can't hit two birds with one stone like you're, you're exactly. doing something great for her but you're still getting value because you're learning that right i get that that's i've not thought of it like that before that's really good it's, like it's really well time well you know time well spent i find it so valuable and you know to trying to get her to do homework jason at home is depressing <laughs> it's like it takes days and days and days but if you're like right we'll go to brampton but in that time you have to do your homework wow it's just Parenting not 101 right there there's some tips yeah. for you parents to get your kids doing homework, drive them somewhere, do it in the car. That's amazing. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, but yeah, and I, I get though that not everyone might be able to drive that far. Like, uh, but yeah, to even just going to your local like ten minute away parks, like even your yeah, local there's, ones. There's, I mean, there's like, different ones there's, in your area, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. You, it's worth going to the different ones. Um, yeah, we're getting to the end of my points, and we've still got fifteen minutes, so we'll be able to delve into some random stuff in a bit. I guess last little <laughs> points I've got here um some of these are not touchy subjects but you know like eliza might be a little bit wondering why we talk about it but you know i, I want to <laughs> ask it and we'll see um uh -oh. because i think this i think it'll give value to other parents because you know like how you manage to cope with it um getting frustrated when she can't land a trick um how to cope with it let's let's touch on this a little bit because as amazing as skateboarding is and when you do land your trick you get a surreal feeling it's the best feeling ever but skateboarding is hard and we can't always land our tricks sometimes so i'm guessing i want to hear from you as a parent like how are you feeling when you see eliza starting to do a trick and you can tell that it's starting to she's struggling and she's getting a bit frustrated like what what could, what information can you give us on that like how you're feeling and you know all that stuff yeah. So I try my best because it's your instinct is to get frustrated, too, because you just think, oh, gosh, it's not that bad. Like, let's just give it a rest and go, you know, we'll try again another day. But what yeah. I try to do now more than um, I did before is um, really see it as a positive. So when she can't land something and she's getting more and more frustrated, I see it um, as a positive thing because it's a skill like life. <laughs> I'm going to go all deep now, but life isn't easy, is it? Like, you you know, there's a, the hurdles that we have to jump all the time that we never expected to have to jump. Um, and yeah. skateboarding, I think, is an amazing tool for that. Like, things aren't always going to go your way. Things aren't always going to be easy. You're going to have to try really hard to make something happen. Um, you know, you can't just give up. Um, so when she does get frustrated, I try to remind myself that this is teaching her something really, really, really it important. Is. And that when she actually does land it, um, it will be so sweet. That feeling will be so much more sweet yeah. than if she just did it once and was able to do it immediately. Um, and I think, you know, it, it applies to so many different parts of her life. It applies to like a subject at school that she struggles with. It and does, if she it really keeps does. Going, she get, yeah. With, you I know, feel so strongly about that. It's yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah, everything in life for me, like being able to grind now because of skateboarding. Um, and I'll, I'll even mention this quick. I was skateboarding yesterday and I'll even put a trick name in now. I was doing a front 5-0 front shove out. I expected to do it in like 10 minutes. It took me an hour and I was getting frustrated and angry. Like it happens to me as well. I've been doing this 18 years. I guess I've got different mechanisms to cope with it a little bit now. But one of the guys there, he's like, oh, maybe, you know, like just play a game of skate and come back to it later. And I'm like, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't like I've got to keep going like and I did do it I did it kind of sketchy um so like I wasn't too happy with it but this is where I would like to maybe give some advice to Eliza so like when she's trying to do something like if, if she's quite a perfectionist isn't she which can be good but like yeah when it gets to that point where you've been doing it for so long and it's maybe not perfect like you just got to take it so like I took my yeah. one yesterday because I knew that I was going to be eating myself up getting too mad otherwise so I kind of like took the sketchy one sketchy just means like not perfect and I was happy so like um yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's uh, it that's the way to go isn't it you just gotta you know take take the, the 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 good when it's there and not not seek perfection entirely the only um the only time it gets really tricky, I'll say, is when she gets hurt, um, because okay. then it's just like, and she feel. I mean, everyone feels pain, but she she really feels it. You know, she's quite um, she's quite skinny. <laughs> she yep. she's quite bony, um, and when she falls, she feels it. And then you know, she um, 
she you know she's 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 hurting so to go back and try again and um, sometimes she's how do you feel about that as a parent i i completely i want to talk about this i completely forgot to do notes on it like that yeah how do you feel as a parent like when she's getting because skateboarding is physical and you can get hurt like and it's dangerous yeah. give some ex- examples or anything that you want to give like how you feel and how you cope as a parent like dealing with that I have told myself that it's going to happen. I've told myself that at some point, if she keeps skating, she's going to make, break a bone. Like, I'm not going to, like, it prob- probably will happen. Uh, you know, most most skaters that I've spoken to, you know, it's, it's one of those, you know, if I ever get talking to a, a skater, um, one of my questions, I'm sure they've got, all skaters get asked this, but what, have you ever broken anything? Um, and nine times out of I ten, still haven't. Yes. I still have I know you haven't. Crazy, See, I said nine times. Touch I said wood. nine times out of ten. Yeah. Touch wood, touch wood. I, mean, <laughs> I do get hurt. I do get I've had injuries, but I've never technically broke anything. But yeah, like it will happen, won't it? So you tell yourself that you know it's gonna yeah, it's happen. Yeah, like it's gonna happen. And as long as she's protected, you know, as long as she's got a helmet on and yeah. she's got knee pads on, and she, you know, she's pretty cushioned, well protected in important areas, then you know that's that's you know the rest it's going to hurt but she wants to do it and she enjoys it and the and that you have to weigh up the pros and cons and there are so many more pros um there is. so let's yeah. talk about the safety equipment and gear like um she's got a good helmet she's i think it's a triple eight brand one which is what i normally recommend to people like is that the only helmet she's ever had did you ever have any problems with helmet sizes i had problems with her wearing a helmet and again you yeah. changed that because you had a, I think you've got a I? rule, you won't, you won't teach without helmet or road I won't teach without helmet. helmet on, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's brilliant, it's okay. brilliant because there's no choice. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that, yeah, because obviously the, hel- the helmet thing is an issue. It, it, helmet's such a tough one, like, it is such a small chance anything will happen, but it could. Um, and then, like, how you learn to fall can change whether you hit your head or not, but, like, these kids haven't perfected falling maybe as good as me and i'm not advocating because uh, i don't wear a helmet and i do feel guilty about it but like um yeah i won't with a child well, I, they have to wear the helmet um but uh yeah like uh, she doesn't always wear one does she which i, I want to be real and honest yeah. because other parents will be in a similar situation talk to me about like because she does some t- she does and she doesn't like is there rules that you have in play like for example it might be Obviously, with me, she has to because I'll force it for my insurance and all that. But like, if if she's trying, if she's on a big ramp or something, or she's trying something new or a bit harder, maybe it's a good idea. Or she's just like in the house doing like a little shove it or something. It's not necessarily yeah. as important, is it? Like, what's That's your views on that? You just- yeah, I think you just need to like gauge it and uh, and use what you you know feel like, like common sense at the time. So if it the worst thing about helmets is how hot they get, and it really yeah. you know, adds to the frustration. She can't land a, a, a trick. She wants to land it. She's got a helmet on. It's really warm outside. She's boiling. She just wants to take it off because it's you know you know what it's like if you've got too many clothes yeah, on like- and it's a warm day. And it feels horrible, um, uh, and so she wants the respite. Um, and if she's you know trying a trick that doesn't look too scary then it'll be like you just take it off for a bit um yeah. but you just gotta i don't know just to see what it's like in the moment but i don't know people just do the same it's just look as well isn't it people i know there's a lot of skill in landing and sometimes yeah. when i'm watching skaters and i see them fall it's beautiful the way they fall i'm like wow they kind of roll around that's your, your dance again. background there isn't it like we're dancing <laughs> as we manage to fall like yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, you know there's the, there's a lot of luck and there's a lot of skill uh, involved in 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 um you know remaining kind of safe and landing on your feet but i've seen people you know not even trying to just just you know cruising if that, I'm probably saying the wrong words down the skate park and then suddenly fall because they've gone over something yeah. that's you know and then they're breaking their finger or their wrist or you know you just it never know happen. so i i think there's a massive there's so much money to be made from any company that can redesign the helmet like i talk about this sometimes think about the helmet design it hasn't changed in my lifetime helmets are still the same like when are we going to see a different material made that can be really thin but incredibly powerful you know incredibly strong so it'll still do the job so it feels like you're wearing a cap like that's what we want to get to we want to get to a point where you can put a helmet on and it feels like you're wearing a cap because then there won't yeah. be any stigma around it and it won't feel hot and i really do hope we'll get there i'm not very good with um knowing this kind of stuff but like there's a need for that because as we've touched on they get hot and there's an issue there so like ideally we should all wear helmets all the time but yeah um what about pads she likes a knee pads don't she yeah and again it's a fashion thing i think 
Like she'll get, you know, she'll wear pads. She likes pads, but she likes at the moment. I don't even know what they are. You'll know what they are, but they're bright. They're like yellow, white, the, blue. The, yeah, yeah, those ones. They're quite the popular brand. ones. I see them a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I can't so remember she, the brand. Yeah. But, but um, it's nice yeah, and ones she, that she, make them feel good. Yeah. For sure, like anything that you can do like that to encourage it, like it's good, you know, wearing the knee pads and that. Um, I've got my last little point here and then we'll just free throw for a bit. But um, yeah, another little tough one. We'll see. Um, getting worried she isn't good enough compared to peers. So yeah. this is, it's, it's, it's a tough conversation to have, but I think it's an important one. Like there's been times where she might feel a bit like not as good as everyone else. And it's yeah. really important we try to, not get to that point but children are children adults are adults as well like you're going to compare yourself to others but skateboarding isn't about that and we've got to try and like make sure everyone realizes that we're all helping each other you know but um like is that is it yeah are there issues that is there anything where like that you're happy to share on that at all like you know i don't want to put yeah absolutely i think it just goes back to my um my other point and in, in that you it's it, skateboarding is a is, is a, a way of learning other other life kind of issues and problems that they encounter. You know, she's not going to ever be, you know, the, the most intelligent girl in her, you know, in her school, or she's not going to have like the best job in the world, or she's not going to be the most, you know, perfect anything. Um, and there's always going to be someone who's got a different, you know, who's better than you at something. Um, and I think it's just about always just trying to, to remind them um, about the benefits of it and, and, and the fun of it. Like, you know, you've got yeah. you always just, and it is hard, it's hard being a teenager anyway, we've all, you know, you remember, and yeah. um, you feel quite insecure at that age, you feel like you're inadequate, you feel like, you know, everyone is prettier than you, is better at ever, football, skating, you know, there's always yeah. someone who you don't look at the people who aren't as good as you, you look at the people that are, and it's such yeah. a natural human, uh, human thing. And it's um, something that we all do, and that it won't stop at skateboarding. And it won't stop as a teenager, we do it as adults as well. Like, you know, I look and think, oh, God, they're such a better parent than me, or, oh, gosh, they work so much harder than me, or oh, I wish I could cook yeah. like them. No, and I so, don't I mean stop. Yeah, you're basically yeah. just saying that it is every every different aspect avenue of life. Like, it isn't just skateboarding, is it? Like, I mean, skate. Yeah, it happens in skateboarding, but like, it, yeah, you're basically saying it happens everywhere, which I agree with. And uh, just got yeah, just got to try and remind them, haven't you? That it's not you know, it's okay. Like, you know, if you can't do something, yeah, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah, and just so try and build on and uh, or really remind them of the of the skills that they are really good at. You know, and um, you know, like Eliza. Um, has got a, a mean ollie like she's good at jumping mm. so I'm just <laughs> so yeah, I just keep good talking she about has. that and yeah so um yeah there's other things that you know she might never be able to do but yeah it's just about just I don't know telling that just taking the heat out of it sometimes and just you know trying to remind your your children about all the brilliant qualities that they have um and not making them focus which is what they, they all you know all children seem to do yeah. so much especially with with social media where they're comparing themselves always for sure. to everything um is it uh, just it's, it's good do you it's good though for them to post their stuff on social media i think because it'll be a good history for them to look back on and you know, and they do they do, everyone does the nice comments and positive stuff in it overall don't oh, and you and again it? you're a great advocate good. for that you've always yeah. encouraged them to write nice things um mm. and again that that you know that passes down you know that makes them write nice you know birthday cards and text messages and you know they, oh, they yeah. have that in their mind like it's good to be nice so you know as well as uh, you know being a, a brilliant skate teacher all these little things that you do just really carry ca you know they they, they they speak volumes when it comes to other aspects of their of their life so it, it's brilliant it does all help i'm gonna throw this at you quick um you mentioned the okay. ollie earlier just a, just a minute ago you mentioned the ollie you know what ollie is Name some other trick stuff. Skater mum. Oh, Any other tricks that Eliza mom. does? Oh. You know Ollie? What have oh, you yeah, didn't Ollie. Uh, she can rock to fakey. She can rock yeah. and roll. She can yeah. drop in. She yeah. can do a 50-50. She can so, axle... Uh, she yeah, so <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Axel Stall and 50 50 are basically the same, but 50 50, you've got to be moving along. So it's oh, maybe, no, yeah. maybe she can't do that one yet. Maybe she can a bit. I don't know. She can do kind an Axel Stall. 
she yep. can do a, a burt slide. That's her yeah. other other. <laughs> Especially recipe, she it? loves the burt slides. Yeah, she, she made me do one of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> she, she, I'll, has I'll... Done the, she has landed a kickflip before. Um, yep. Uh, she has she got any more? She's probably got. She's like, mum, you. Oh, just, I you mean, didn't say that. No, no. It's yeah, she's got loads. But I I just wanted to get out there that skater mums learn the trick names and stuff because I think that's super cool. <laughs> because uh, my parents didn't learn any, so like you know, shout out to you for that. Um, yeah, um, we've we've done an hour. I mean, I'm sure I could chat to you for multiple hours. Any other no, last no, bits? Should, yeah, I know. I could. Yeah, delve in. We could, you know, part two another time, whatever. Any other last <laughs> bits that we should talk about? Anything? You no, I just want to say anything? thank you to you, Jason. In a really soppy way, you are amazing at what you do. You so are. And just keep, you know, keep on, keep on doing it. I'm taking your slogan. Keep, keep on, on skating. skating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's That was Eliza that created that. I, I credit Eliza for that. I'm sure I do. I could be wrong. My memory could be wrong. I think that's why I started doing it because of Eliza. I don't know. I well, that we'll, we'll take it. That she, yeah, we'll have even if it's not true. We'll 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 take that one. But no, I think the the impact that you have on 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 children's lives is quite a big one. And if you can, yeah, just in any small way, you know, just by even the way you talk to them down the part when they're not even in your lesson, you know, you've always got oh, time yeah. and yeah. Yeah, that, um, I think that's important to do. Yeah, like, you know, just chat with them. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, I'm still grateful that, you know, you do pay me at the end of the day. It is my full-time job to be able to do skateboarding and stuff. So thank you for your support as well. It does work both ways. Um, yeah, all good then, yeah. Um, I think we're well, done. thank you so. for having me. Cool, I'll just wrap it up quick. So yeah, hopefully if you've been listening to this, you've enjoyed the episode. This is one of the parents I've got on. So I've got different topics and stuff. Um, try, uh, hopefully going to get a pro skateboarder on next. Let's get Joe Hinton on. We'll chat about uh, stories of a pro skater. Um, and uh, yeah, any constructive criticism or anything, anyone wants to pass over to me, send me a message. Always good to hear. Um, I don't even know how to wrap this stuff up. I think I do. I think we're going to... Let's end it. I'm all good. Um, keep oh. on skating. Woo! <laughs>